in the league. Right. Nobody thought they were going to be this. Yeah. And um, they're still probably not newsflash here. They're still probably not as good as last year's team because that dude Kawhi is on the Clippers. I probably know what I'm going to get from the Raptors right now more than I can Boston. Like, I just wish I could see the four guys play together for Boston because I think they're top four with Kemba, Tatum, Jalen, and Gordon. Um, And Gordon's still kind of, you know, I don't know, but Tatum's taking it to another level. That game against the Clippers last week was absolutely it was unbelievable, great regular season game. I know both teams were missing guys, but to see Tatum to kind of take it to that level, kind of take it at Kawhi, defend him as well. Yeah. Like that I felt like it was um I said on a tweet, I feel like that's a like a little line that you have to darken in a little bit on his career timeline. Mm. So, you know, some part of me is like, wait a minute, would Tatum actually like this version of Tatum, would he be the best player in that series? Cause is he the kind of guy at this age? And especially where I was really worried about him a couple months ago, would he be enough of a guy to win that game and on the road there? Um, Toronto find finds ways like they're interchangeable parts and all the things like, I still think I know what they are more, even though they've missed a Baca, they had to go small the other night. Gasol's missed time. Powell's been hurt, but every freaking night, it feels like there's this third guy from Toronto. You're like, Terrence Davis did what? OG and Anobi had 25. Yeah. Like, there's some nights where Siakam isn't really the guy for them. And his numbers have dipped off a little bit as the months have gone by but I still probably feel like I know what Toronto is a little bit more than Boston and just pulling up their strength, the schedule that's remaining. Uh, they're both neck and neck right there. 11th Toronto has 11th toughest and Boston has the 12th toughest. So I have all 34 if you need them. I think the difference between the two teams and I think they're really close and I think that will be an awesome round two if that ends up being what it, it ends up being. The, Cel- the Celtics have one notch up to go because of the Tatum factor. What he showed in that Clippers game and in general, what's happened to him over the last five, six weeks. There's, there's nobody on the Raptors that is a, a wild card like that. Cause there's a chance, like you said, could Tatum be the best guy in a Raptors Celtics playoff series? Six weeks ago, I would have said no fucking way. That's insane. No way. It's Siakam. Right. I mean, it, it feels stupid to even say, right? Right. And now as we head out of the all-star break, from what we've seen from Tatum and the stuff he's doing night to night and not just the encore performance, but the way that his teammates are starting to talk about him. And I really think that matters. I like to read all the stories and I like to, there's this invisible point players pass when the teammates really start like becoming their Bundini Brown in a lot of ways. And it's starting to happen with Tatum. All those guys, you know, it could be Enos Cantor, it could be Kemba, um, even Jalen Brown, who has like a little rivalry with them to some degree because they're a year apart. And all of them are like, the sky's the limit for this guy. This guy's amazing. This guy's so talented. This guy does stuff in practice that we can't believe. And he's starting to put it together in games. And I think for them, that's the ceiling. The The, the big thing for them is just, can they keep those seven guys healthy heading into April? But you could say that about any playoff team. I don't think anyone else in the East has an upside guy like him. And when you think about what happened with Siakam last year with Toronto um, versus where he is this year, and there's whatever change with him changed. And I wonder if it can happen for Tatum this year or whether it's still something that happens next season. So, and the numbers on them are, are really close. And like, if you look at, it, I think it's Toronto's up two one in the regular season, but the first game was, was forever ago. And then they had like two games where they took each other out. But, you know, I'd have to go back and double check the box scores where you're sure, you know, Toronto's missed guys. And again, like Boston, I'd love to see all four of those guys play together for a month straight and see what happens. I'd love to see Hayward play for a month straight and yep. feel really good about himself because I'm still, you know, it's year three with him and we we still don't really know because it's just, it hasn't been easy. He was hurt and then he, the whole Kyrie stuff last year and it not working out. But, you know, I was pulling up the numbers again, offensive rating, like Boston's fifth and you go, oh, Toronto's 12th, but you know, really we're talking about the difference of a point yeah. for 100 possessions. And defensively, they're two and three, Toronto and Boston, and they're almost identical on that one. So they're both really good teams. And I can't believe, like I'm saying this now, 55 games in, but I probably, you know, I know I, I goof on Lowry and all that stuff, but I just, I don't know, is it weird for me to say, I think I trust them a little bit more than Boston? It has nothing to do with them last year either. Like, I don't, like, it's a different team without Kawhi. I don't care. I don't care what their, their I'm with you. status I- is. I think they get a slight edge. If you're betting your life on it, I I think it would be dumb to bet on Boston when they haven't proven it with this nucleus yet. But I will say, whatever happens with the Celts this year, they dodged a bullet with the Horford thing, which is going to bring us to Philly in a second. But 
you know, I think they were ready to go like three years, 90 million for him. They yeah, were, they were going to go. I mean, they were going to do it. Was going to do not, it. I think once it got over a hundred, once they heard it was over a hundred, my understanding is that they were like, "Look," and I think that's what makes Ainge a really good GM. Is most GMs would be like, "Ah, screw it, we got to do it." Like, what are we going to do? Ainge has like, Ainge does a really. You got to look at his history, not you, but his history on not losing his mind on a player. Yeah, with contracts, he's he's about as good as anybody in the league with that stuff. Right, and they let him go, and I think there's real signs now that. I'm not saying he's washed up, but I I think the Horford from two years ago when Kyrie was out and they almost made the finals and he was such a key part of that team. I just don't think he's that guy anymore. And whether he can move into a different phase of his career, but you know, the way the league is played now, when you have a guy who's a five and he's not somebody who can roll to the rim and get rebounds and stuff like that. And he's basically just a stretch five. I think it would have hurt the Celtics team to have him. As much as I like him and as crucial as I think he is, I just think they're better off with these big guys who have their hands up and are going toward the rim and getting offensive rebounds. And it's just a better fit. They have enough guys on the perimeter already. So I think that was a big break for them that they they aren't saddled with that contract because I don't know if it's tradable. That brings us to Philly, which was my second question. Will they be afraid to fire Brett Brown before April if it becomes clear over the next three to four weeks that this team is just off for whatever reason. That's the only move left this season would be to tra- to change the coach. Do you think there's any chance they would do that? No, I don't. I mean, we everybody kind of in the basketball world was like, okay, well, Brett Brown's getting fired. I mean, do we do we not remember? You know, ten months ago, like that was that was a big surprise I, outside of Philadelphia. And yep. I think even like people that cover the team and root for the team were like, oh wait, they're keeping him, and. No, I like that they gave Brett Brown a chance of like all of those awful teams. Hey, you're going to get your brains beat in all the time. We're a laughing stock of the league. We do have this plan, but you know, people just don't have the patience. They like it's easy to say, "Hey, are you going to be cool with this?" Yeah, no problem. And then two years go by, and you're like, you know what? Now that it's real, this sucks. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad, you know, look, I'm glad that he got a chance. Everybody likes him and all that stuff. And like, I feel like a loser sometimes being like, "Oh, everybody says he's a really great guy" and all that stuff because I don't really like talking about like this guy must be fired. I don't do that very often. But if they have an ugly exit, which you know, no one thought they were going to be flirting with a five or six seed. And the funny thing about the Horford signing for them, Bill, is that's given like every pro Philly aggro dude, like everything's Horford's fault now. And it's not. And it's, and you know, I've looked through it and I've had the numbers thrown at me and I've, you know, I have the way I watch a game where I go, all right, well, let's see fourth quarter if Embiid and Simmons are getting in each other's way because the numbers with Horford off the floor the per 100 possessions when it's Horford off and beat Simmons on, they're like a really like a staggeringly good offensive number, but yet the offensive efficiency overall for the team is bad. And those are the two best players. But then I would be like, okay, well how many minutes versus minutes that they've played with Horford out there all the time? Like how many minutes are there minutes where it's Sim- Simmons and Embiid who Brett tries to split up more this year than he ever has in the past. Like, is that, are there enough minutes? And somebody told me it was 400 minutes and beads played like 1200 I mean, I could do some harder digging on this stuff, but I also know that what my eyes tell me and that, yes, I know what the numbers say without Horford per 100 possessions this year. It tells me it's this great offense. Well, let's see it. Let's, you know, can we get to game 70 maybe where it looks like it's this good offense because fourth quarter, you know, they were mad this week from Philly. So I I, I respected watching him this week and going, okay, well, like they look pissed off about all of this controversy. So maybe that's it. But I don't know what to do with that team because I still think, and they've got some nice bench pieces I like now. And they're benching Horford. Cork Moss has been really good. I still love the names. You know, remember you and I talking to each other before the first game started? We're like, who's going to win the East? I go, you know, when I go one through eight with Philly, like, I can't believe I'd pick anybody else. Yeah. And here we are doing this shit again. And it's almost, it's almost March. It reminds me of that last Scotty Brooks season when they. Philly? Or in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City, City when... <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Like, how far are we... Oh, yeah. Never mind. When uh, it was after 2014, disappointing playoff exit, and everyone thought they were going to get rid of him, and they didn't. And then they had that next season where Durant was hurt for most of the year, and Westbrook was hurt. They ended up... I think they won like 45 games, but they ended up not making the playoffs. And then they got rid of Scotty Brooks. But they should have gotten rid of him in 2014. I get why they didn't do it, and I'm a big loyalty guy, obviously, but um, it's just a team that doesn't look like it's on the same page. And it looks like a team, depending on where they fall in the playoffs, and 
you know, I don't know if they were, you know, they had a choice to be the five seed or the six seed. There could be some jockeying, you know, like if they feel like, oh man, we could actually beat Toronto, but we don't want to play Miami or whatever. You could see some maneuvering down the stretch. You could also see Embiid might get hurt for two, three weeks or whatever. I, I have, I think, wouldn't you say they're more likely to be a six seed than like a three seed? Well, if Boston is up in the three seed and I'm Philly, I'd rather play Boston than Miami based on the matchups there because that's the part of the Boston front line where right. you know, certain nights it looks good. But like when the canner, when they went small against Houston, I couldn't even believe Brad Stevens played canner eight minutes. You know, I know. Look, it's Brad Stevens, but you know, you know what he's doing. Brad's like, all right, let me throw a few minutes his way. We'll see what happened. And I don't think we ever saw him in the second half. And then in the Clippers game, Losing Tice, like Tice is actually a great matchup in that one against the Clippers because of Montrez, because like, he can stay active with him. And look, I'm not saying Tice is as good as Montrez Harrell, but that was another game where it was like, all right, you got to get Canner out of here. And I've seen the Embiid Celtics front line thing in person. That was my four sideline seats underneath the basket where I sat by myself. Um, <laughs> where <laughs> just a quick shout out to uh, landing in Chicago, hotel, restaurant. They put me at the bar. I was wearing sweatpants, eating pasta by myself, Valentine's, 10 o'clock on a Friday night, packed house. A couple people recognized me, and they're like, this guy is by himself a lot. <laughs> but look, that's just, that's just married to the game. Um, but why? I, if I'm Philly and I could lose to get into the 6th seed to play Boston in the 6-3, I'd much rather do that. Um, but then I guess, I guess you could also argue, like, do you really think, like, I love the Bam out of bio story. I love watching that guy play. But, I mean, is he going to lock up Embiid for, for seven games? So there's something. Yeah, I mean, there's. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, Philly could finish six here, and I might pick him to make it to the Eastern Conference final still after all the garbage we keep talking Which, about. It. I don't remember the last time. I think it was the, maybe the 99 Knicks, the last time a seed below the four seed made the uh, finals. Well, that was a shortened season with their yeah. eight seed, right? Yep. Yeah. Next question. Just let's do this quickly. Tristan Thompson, Cleveland says they're not going to buy him out, but I, I don't know why they w- wouldn't. Like, why not save a couple million bucks? It's not like he's going to resign there next year anyway. And if he if he gets bought out, he makes really no sense for the Lakers. Although I could see LeBron trying to grab him just to make sure the Clippers didn't get him. The team he makes the most sense for is the Celtics. I could also see LeBron talking him out of going there. And talking about going to the Clippers and sending him to some weird, you know, like the Rockets. Now, if he went to the Rockets, that would, you know, pretty much immediately change what we thought their playoff destiny was. Do you think he gets, why wouldn't he get bought out, I guess is my question. Because Cleveland's an absolute mess. I don't know if you saw the report we had tonight with Windhorse where Beeline's basically contemplating whether or not he's going to come back after the All-Star break. I can tell you now that before the season even started, that entire team was like, Nope to beeline. <laughs> right. Um, like before the season started, I'd heard, hey, this is like the fastest ever, but the entire locker room is out on this guy and the season hasn't even started. And then, you know, he's got the thugs comment in there, which he tried to say, hey, look, it was just a slip of the tongue. Maybe it was, mm. maybe it wasn't. I don't I don't freaking know. But like it was a locker room that already didn't like him. And you know how people work. Like if you can come up with another reason, an excuse to be motivated to dislike somebody, you can talk yourself into believing that he wasn't, you know, that he meant to say it and that it was some Freudian slip. Uh, you got Kevin Love, who signed for all the money, who's been miserable the entire time. And I'm not trying to be insensitive to everything else with Kevin Love, but he, you know, it's not like he's some leader of men. You know, he's wanted out of there and they can't, they keep trying to think of him as an asset. So, in any other normal situation, I'd be like, why wouldn't you do? And that's doing the agent a favor, like the way business is done in the NBA. You'd be like, well, why would you buy out Tristan Thompson? Well, because the agents go, hey, buy our guy out, get him off the roster, get him eligible for March 1st so he's ready to go for a playoff team, and just enough of this. But I have a hard time believing with the LeBron clutch thing that Boston would even be in the running. We could probably go ahead and say that's a no right now. <laughs> uh, and I like and I like Tristan Thompson. Like I, I like the way... <laughs> he's looked this year. Um, not that I've been locked into a lot of Cavs games, but I go, look at that guy, man. He's still out there. He's competing and all that kind of stuff. And he's a different kind of matchup. But I also think those teams, and I'll finish here, but you almost feel like, I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. You know, like when you go to Bourbon Street and you're young, you're like, do I get one of those massive fluorescent drinks that's full of sugar and a huge straw, which is probably going to screw up my entire night? Yeah, I'll get one of those. Because I have to. I'm that's, here. That's Kyle's Thursday night. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> that's what the teams that are like jockeying for you know a deep playoff run like you almost feel obligated to add 